boss's camper. <laughs> <laughs> So these are the filters that we just pulled out of the dust collection system and uh, Josh wants to keep them in case of a backup, but I don't know. Don't fucking throw those trash. things away. Absolute trash. Get those out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to breathe clean air. <laughs> Need a blow job, Travis? We have our magnetic knife holding boards. Poor Josh had to load all these into the truck by himself today from Sean's and probably why his shoulder's bugging at me, he had to go to the doctor. <laughs> so there's not a lot going on today. Um, the guys bought some air filters. Uh, my dad went to the hospital, well, not the hospital, the doctor, to get his shoulder checked out. He kind of heard it, I think, loaded some cutting boards, the chef cutting boards. Um, but on a brighter note, these fillets, we're just finishing these up, packaging them. Um, these are actually the last ones for the drop this Thursday, so that's super exciting. All right, so we have Ryan here. He's a highway patrolman. He brought in his knives to us today to get them sharpened. How you doing, guys? My name is Ryan with Highway Patrol. Um, I brought in two knives that I've been using. Very fixed blade, and I carry two fixed blades in my car. I got the Blackfoot uh, MagnaCut, uh, orange handle. Uh, I've got a little mount in the back of my car that I'll be putting in for it so that it's accessible if we need it. Generally, fixed blades can be used for uh, cutting seatbelts if needed. Seatbelt cutters can sometimes jam up too. And then just everyday, everyday carry EDC. The um, speed goat is generally what I carry most of the time. Do you have anything good to say about Josh? <laughs> I've met Josh a few times. Um, I, I'm a strong proponent for American-made products. Uh, in addition to being highway patrolman, I'm also in the National Guard. So I mean, I'm pro-American with what we do with products, and it's good to see like the growth of his company. I've been watching throughout the last few few years, um, and I've gotten a few knives over time. Uh, it's good to see a guy that's willing to put forth some effort for uh, put for some effort getting some knives out to people keeping keeping the american dream alive what year what year was this 2003 2003 yeah. oh, 20 Cause, years yeah because I, I we talked at the uh vegas knife show yeah i said you know i want you to make something for me and just it gave you a basic you know i like I, I said i like the damascus yeah. I like the pearl handle. He said, well, I'll come up with something. It still looks like the day I made it. Well, let's take this in and show the team. Sure. You know, and, and we'll give you a little See what you, tell, Show them what you used to do. Yeah. So, so in 2003, I made this knife. So I was 22 years old. Um, made this Damascus knife here. It's not a folder. It's a fixed blade with a mother of pearl handle. So that, that Damascus steel is actually... It's, it's like 1080 and 1084, 15 and 20, and then the silver lines in there are actually pure nickel. So nickel does not turn colors when you get it hot, like steel does. If you just heat up steel, it'll turn uh, gold and then purple and blue. So I use uh, um, niter bluing salts, and I heat the blade and the bolsters and stuff in that, and it turns that, that blue and purple color and the different alloys turn color at different rates. So that's why you'll see some like light blue and dark blue or even purple in the bolster. Kind of a cool little knife. How long it's did just it take cool. You to do All his knives were cool back then. <laughs> <laughs> what he's saying is you guys got to step your game up. And make some cool <laughs> yeah. I don't think, did you ever leave a show without selling all your knives? Uh, not, no, no, not easily. Did, yeah. It's been quite a week. Uh, we just had our filet knife drop last night. Uh, it was smashing success, uh, sold out. Bunch of the models sold out actually really, really fast. Um, so thank you for the support on all that. It, it means the world to us. I got a brand new Matthews bow. Uh, thank you to Matthews. Um, sent that for a hunt that I'm doing this uh, this fall in New Mexico. And I don't know what happened Saturday morning, but I um, think I maybe tore, partially tore my rotator cuff last Saturday. It's hurts like hell and I got an MRI coming up at some point here. Lastly, uh, good old Al, uh, one of our favorite employees here. Super good dude shot my camper uh, with his bow. Actually not his bow. And I really don't put it as much on Al. Uh, he was trying to draw back Matt's bow. Matt is crazy strong and uh, it's an 80 pound bow. Uh, Al's a new shooter, hasn't really shot much. And I think he was trying to find the peep because that bow doesn't fit him. His draw length is way too long. And he shot an arrow straight into my camper. Um, 
brand new camper too. This camper's been on the road twice, so it's already got a narrow hole in it, but shit happens, uh, but he's not gonna get to live it down anytime soon until somebody around here does something. Thought Al could, uh, could shoot my bow and not hit anything, but I was completely wrong. I hit some. Dishonored my ancestors. Hit <laughs> Josh's camper. <laughs> oh, dude. Ah, uh, feel terrible about it. It sucks. It was mostly my fault. Uh, probably should have started him a little closer to the target, but it's a whole learning experience. I will say, Josh's Josh's camper and uh, and raft is is in the in the bow range. So anything's game at this point. Hey guys, so I'm working on something pretty special right now. I can't show you what it is because it doesn't release for another couple weeks. But let's go outside so I can show you something pretty special. All right, guys, so for this giveaway, we're giving away this Fieldcraft Survival Knife. Um, it's definitely one of my favorites. All you have to do to win this guy is like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We also ask that you check out our newsletter and subscribe to that.